Ooh, look what just came in. Stickers. And this as well. Sweet. Hey, what's going on guys? Chris Ramsey here. Thanks for tuning in. I wanna say a big thanks to everyone who commented on my last video. I didn't anticipate such a massive response. I just asked you guys where you're from and literally thousands of people replied, which is absolutely insane. Makes me feel really welcome in the community to know that so many of you are watching these videos and share the same passion. It's really, really a cool thing for me to know. And who knows, maybe you've met somebody through the comments who's in your country, which is also kind of cool. And thanks for the offers of inviting me to your country. It's really cool knowing that I have a place to crash no matter which uh, part of the world I go. I might hit some of you up on those offers eventually. Today I'm gonna talk to you about something that a lot of people ask me about and I never really, never really talked about it, but how I got into magic. So, this all started when I was a kid. My grandfather showed me a trick, and this sounds really cliche. I might have been like 10 years old or something, and probably a trick a lot of you are familiar with, where you take a penny and you rub it against your arm, doesn't do anything, you rub it again, doesn't do anything, but then the third time when you rub it in the arm, all of a sudden, it's disappeared. The way I felt about that when I saw that for the first time was literally that penny is inside of his skin and that freaked me out. So that was one thing that really stuck with me and I thought that was the most cool thing I've ever seen. And I had no idea how he did it until a few years later, my grandpa performed this literally every time I'd see him because he saw the reaction. So eventually I figured it out. Um, but that got me on to, oh, well this is interesting that even at my young age, I can fool people that are two, three, four times my age into, into believing that there's a penny on the inside of my elbow. So it was a really cool thing. Now, fast forward a few years, I picked up a few tricks here and there, nothing too crazy. Stuff like you'd normally do, like the 21 card trick and these type of things. It wasn't until, I think the first David Blaine special, and I'm not sure, correct me if I'm wrong, if it was 99 or 2001, but when he did his street magic special, that really hooked me. I was like, when I saw him just doing simple card tricks, well, what's simple to me now, what back then blew my mind, uh, to just random people and getting those kind of reactions that he had was really something that uh, turned me on to magic. And I think a lot of people share that same thing with uh, Blaine videos or whether it's Chris Angel or Dynamo. Um, some people even watch my street magic videos and started after that, which blows my mind even more. But after watching those uh, performances, I had no resource. I didn't know there was a magic community. Um, I didn't have a magic shop near where I lived and the internet was just starting to sort of grow. So looking online was definitely a big part of it. Uh, when YouTube came out, that was obviously one of the great things about YouTube is I could watch the reruns of shows and TV shows and stuff like that and pick up their performances, watch it two, three, four, five times and then reverse engineer how he did it. So one of the first tricks I reverse engineered from Blaine's special was his two card Monty, something I still perform today. Now obviously I've changed it around a bit to fit my personality, but that was the trick that I was like, I need to know how to do that, that's amazing. And ever since then, I just started picking up here and there, little TV shows, little segments of tricks, and I just got so interested with all of this. I started working at a bar, I think I was 20 years old, so this was 12 years ago, yes, age check, I'm an old guy. And I uh, started working in this bar, and I realized a bar is the absolute perfect place to perform magic. I mean, think about it. Low lighting, loud music, drunk people, and a place to ditch things. Not to mention the fact that being behind the bar, you have a certain authority on people. Like, because you're the person in charge, people just listen to you and, and they believe you, and it's just really easy to interact with people. And I was never somebody who was very shy as a kid, so it was really, it was a good place for me to sort of hone that craft and to really develop my showmanship skills with people. And it got me a good tip. But one other thing it did is uh, when people were on either ends of the bar who didn't know each other, who were either waiting for a friend or just hanging out, it was a great opportunity for me to get those people in, get them in a circle around the bar and be like, you guys, come sit here, I'm gonna perform some magic 
it just for you. And they would get excited because they had literally nothing else to do except drink. So providing that type of entertainment to them, again, good tips, but it got people to connect, people who didn't know each other, which I thought was an amazing thing. Now, at this point, I might've had a dozen tricks in my repertoire, uh, which, which I was really proud of. Every Friday, this guy would come in, a guy by the name of Jay, he was also a bartender, and uh, I would perform for him. Eventually, he came in with his friends and said, here's 50 bucks. If you can fool me three times, I will give you this $50 tip. Now for me, 50 bucks was huge. That's a massive tip. So I was like, oh, hell yeah. Like, I mean, I'd do it for free, but I didn't let Jay know that, obviously. So proceeded to fool him three times in a row, got my $50 tip. I felt great. I felt like a performer, like I got paid for what I did. His friends loved it. Thing is, Jay came back the next week and the week after and the week after that. And this went on for like six months. So you can imagine I started running out of tricks real fast. That was when I started doing my research. I needed to come up with new routines, new tricks to fool this guy and his friends so I could get my $50 tip. So it was kind of like a kick in the ass to get out there and see what else is available. And that's where I started Googling magic tricks and ended up, I started getting books. So I got uh, Expert Card Technique, Royal Road to Card Magic, Card College, some Tarbell. This is where I really started developing. And a lot of these tricks are super simple, or the simplest tricks you could ever do, but they're some of the strongest tricks you could ever do. There's a reason for that. It's like, you know, whenever these tricks were conceived, they were, the, they were its purest form with like the most minimal amount of slights focused mainly on presentation. And it was, it was fooling. Now people sort of revisit these tricks and come up with other handlings, but for mostly the sake of originality and not so much for the sake of the effect. So if you want the good stuff, that's where it is. And then you just develop, you know, your own routine for it. But the good stuff is in the books. It just snowballed from there. I worked at this bar for three years and I became the performer at the bar. I became the guy who, you know, performed magic tricks to people. And that started you know, getting people interested in hiring me for their events, their parties, their weddings, that type of thing. And uh, it just snowballed from there. I started taking gigs on the side, still working. Um, I then started working for a tiling company and a cement company. I know this sounds really weird. I used to tile and uh, I was a North American representative for a German cement adhesive company, super random. Part of my job as a PR rep was to take care of the clients, to take care of them, uh, to entertain them. And so at one point they flew me out to Germany with like a whole bunch of architects from Toronto and I had to spend a week with them and sort of entertain them. So we ended up going to like the Mercedes Museum. We ended up taking them out to restaurants, I had a tour guide show us around a small town in Germany. But when it came down to supper time, everybody was expecting magic. And that's when I really started performing. And everybody kind of looked at me like, how come you're not doing this for a living? How come you're still here? And I told them, well, you know, this is my passion, but I do enjoy working for the company. Fast forward again, a few months, I, was at a trade show in Las Vegas with this company. I perform magic at the booth and that type of thing and entertain people selling the product. And uh, there was this like private party on a rooftop for all of these sort of major players in the cement business. And uh, I started performing for them and gathered a crowd of maybe 30, 40 people around me performing. And I started booking gigs professional corporate gigs with my clients. It was at that moment that I knew that magic is something that I wanted to rely on for the rest of my life. It's something I wanted to do professionally, something I wanted to do out of the passion of my heart. It's something that I needed to do. Money or not, I would figure it out. This is what I'm going to do. Not until I retire, but until I die. And uh, I'm still here. The journey has taken me this far and I'm really, really happy and proud of where I've come and uh, all the work that I put in is really starting to pay off and I'm really happy about that. I'm not gonna shy away from that. I'm proud of myself. And uh, I think at some point when you work really hard for this, like you guys see the result, but you don't see the work that goes in. You know, I, I tell myself I deserve it. In the most humble way, I deserve all the success that I've worked hard for. And I think it's an important thing to, to remind yourself of that. To not tell yourself, oh, you're lucky. I get that a lot when people you know, ask me what I do for a living and I explain to them what I do and it blows their mind, first of all, that there's like this whole community of magic and it blows their mind that I make a decent living doing what I do. And the first thing that they say to me is, you're extremely lucky to be doing what you love. Um, now, I know where in their heart that comes from, but to me, it has nothing to do with luck. It's preparation meets opportunity. So if you prepare your whole life for something and an opportunity comes up, chances are you're gonna seize that opportunity. If you're not prepared, the opportunity will pass you by. So it's, it's, it's not so much luck, but it's putting myself in those opportunities. Now, I'm fortunate enough to be able to put myself in those positions. I know some people geographically or they're like, 
religious barriers that prevents them or in the family, and I understand that. When you want to do what it is you want to do for the rest of your life, you can't take direction from anyone else in your life. And I know that's easy to say, but my parents as well were, you know, they were afraid. They were like, oh, you're gonna leave this job to do magic? To them, it was the most insane thing ever. And uh, you know, they loved me very much, so they wanted to, they wanted me to keep my security for my own happiness, but they didn't know that that security was actually eating me up inside and that I needed to express myself through this platform. And I just, I just said, you know, just you guys have to trust me. And I went out and did it and now they're really proud of me and now, but still every time I'm like, okay, now I wanna do this. And they're just like, oh, I don't know who said this first, but when you, when you do the impossible just once, when you do something that other people said was gonna be impossible, when you do it just once, never again will that sentence affect you. Never again will that sentence constrict you from doing anything. When you pass that, something inside your mind says, it's not a question of if, it's a question of how and when. You know, that fuels the passion inside of me, fuels, and I'm sure a lot of you have that same feeling. And use it, it's yours. And if, you know, if you believe in it, I'm not gonna say that you're gonna be successful at it, but you'll be happy. So enough about me, I wanna know about you. How you got started in magic, what started you on your magic journey? Where are you right now? At the point where you wanna be a professional magician? Are you at the point where you're just starting? Or are you a working magician who might have some insight for the younger uh, developing audience uh, that's here on YouTube? I mean, there's a lot of valuable information out there and I'm certainly not the only one to give uh, to give information or to give advice, um, but perhaps a lot of you could shed some light on where your journey started and how you ended up being where you are. I'm sure a lot of uh, the viewers would appreciate that type of uh, comment. So if you guys wanna do that, um, obviously if you like this video, I hate asking, but hit the like button, it really helps me out. It helps out uh, the video and my channel as well. So on that note, thanks guys for tuning in. I hope I didn't bore you to death. I hope you didn't fall asleep during this, in, during this whatever this is. And uh, I hope to catch you soon on the next video. Got some exciting things coming up and I don't wanna spoil the surprise, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Thanks again, have a good day.